used to only do other things outside of magic with the intention of it oh, yeah. having a positive benefit towards my magic mm -hmm. and that is quite unhealthy for me to be honest so yeah it's just like just do things that are fun and if anything c c comes of it great and if nothing comes of it you still had a great time so <laughs> So, Moritz Mueller from Germany. Is that correct? Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> oh, my greatest pleasure. You know, we've been chatting for a little bit on Instagram now. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, well, I mean, uh, what's fun about you is that, um, uh, how old were you? Because I discovered you with like a one coin routine, return shunt, stuff like that. Uh, how old were you like in those beginnings? Uh, that was I, I was 14 years old, I think, okay. around that time, and okay. I started when I was 12. Uh, so uh, almost 10 years I've been to magic now. Okay, but see what's interesting is that uh, physically, because I have children, I have three, uh, 10, 11, and five years old, and the age where you started compared to right now, physically you're in a transformation where we get to see you go into adulthood. You know, so you're not growing like this anymore. You're growing lengthwise now. You know. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's cool. I mean, uh, you're turning out to be uh, like a, a young gentleman. You, you always present yourself very, oh, no, uh, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, just in the few conversations that we've had, I mean, you're interested in philosophy. You're studying in that. Uh, psychology is what, is yeah, what psychology. I'm studying. Uh, yeah, my brother is actually into philosophy, which is also quite fascinating. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. Well, there's a little bit of philosophy in psychology, I, I, a mm. little bit. But uh, I mean, just dwelling in that at like a young age is something that is not uh, common, I would say, you know? Uh, mm. The magic part of it, did that come by influence of family by any chance? Uh, yeah, it did actually. So my dad uh, does magic and uh, that was actually the first time, so, it was, so magic was always kind of around, like I would go to shows uh, where my dad would uh, would do something and I was just like never really interested in it, which I'm sure you can relate to with your own children. It's like, exactly. oh, it's just what dad, it's just what dad does, right? It's like, yeah. you, you don't really, you don't really. It's uh, foolish. Exactly. And uh, then it was uh, my 12th birthday, actually. Uh, I had a couple of friends over and uh, then some of them asked if my dad would uh, would show them something. And I thought, well, why, why, did they, why, why did they want to see my dad do something? <laughs> so uh, so he, he did uh, some stuff with them and my friends were all just like completely flabbergasted and so amazed. And uh, in that moment, I sort of viewed it through the eyes of someone else for the first time, right? And then it, it, I really found it interesting. I asked my dad for some resources which obviously that was a great advantage, especially in the beginning, you know, uh, there's a big difference between Googling how to do card trick and having someone hand you card college and go here, you know. Was he more uh, like a versatile magician or more uh, like uh, leaning towards cards or coins? Because I discovered you with coins, but then over discussions, we realized you like cards as well. Uh, so what, like, what process, when you started with coins, was he more a coin manipulator? Um, no, my dad does mostly like comedy stage stuff, and I was always just like more interested in the, the close-up uh, magic like of it all. Like in class, maybe? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and the interesting part is like, um, the reason I fell in love with coin magic was the first time I learned a French drop, right? Because it's so, it's so, the mechanics of it are so simple. Yeah. Right, uh, but I was just like so fascinated. I was just like watching myself in the mirror and seeing how little details can make such a big difference. 
right? Like just where you look and how you shift your body weight and the timing of it all. And then not even talking about motivation, right? Which is obviously one of the most important aspects, like reaching for something, having a reason to do the transfer. Uh, and that was just incredibly fascinating to me because coin magic is at its base, very, very simplistic, both in terms of effects and in terms of method. Right? Yes. If you're if you're restricted by like gimmick list, which I was in the beginning, just like out of yeah. <laughs> sense of aesthetic, uh, there's really well you hide it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically, that's basically that's the method. Of course, there's like more intricate uh, sort of construction aspects at play, like one ahead principles or uh, having an extra coin or something like that. But at its essence, it is so so simple, meaning that the the smallest details can make such a huge difference, which I think makes it an excellent sort of playground to first discover the principles of magic. I don't think it's a coincidence that coin magic is so often used as an example to explain like theoretical concepts. Like for example, in uh, here, Juan Tamaris, the magic way, like the coin vanish is the, the one thing he, he explains his entire concept on. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I think it's, uh, like, of course, I love performing it, I love watching it, but I think um, now looking back on the way my magic has developed, I think uh, I view it more as like a, a, a playground and a uh, exactly. like an academic simulation almost. <laughs> no, no, but see, there's something that I've been discussing recently with other uh, creative colleagues. Like, you're at a stage where just for you, 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 uh, you're exploring the methods, but through play. Adult, yeah. later on, that same, same thing, it becomes work. And I find that that fragmentation, it, it, um, it leads people towards a very sterile environment and it, it limits the growth. Because when you start working at something, you want to limit the mistakes, but mistakes are the core of where the new ideas start. So there's something in there that I wanted, to, me personally, with my professional background, I wanted to stop with that and find a way to go back to the play, you know? And like the way that you explain that, uh, I find it, it's very nice because you, like you said, there's so many elements. It's not just a coin falling in your hand, you know, like the French drop, or you could call it the German drop if you want. I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, but like you say, it's the body language, it's the contact, it's the patter. And it's uh, like you say, um, a lot of people I find that they fall in the loophole of focusing on the technical method of it rather than the justification of it. Because if you say, like you say, look, look, I'm going to do something. There's no, you're not setting up the mystery, you know? And that's so wonderful. Also, you, I just thought of the, um, one of the most important aspects also for, for, uh, for, the, uh, for the false transfer, I think, is what Pete Hartling wrote in his book about the performing mode, right? There's like such yes. a huge difference between saying, watch, or saying, watch. Like, exactly. See? When, does, when does it start? It's such an interesting, it's such it an is. interesting concept to play with. So yes, yeah, just, like, there's just like so much to explore, but I think that in general, magic always sort of has these like two sides to it. It has this, like, the, because it is not only an artistic endeavor, right? There is the, the engineering and the methodological exactly. part to it, which it's a is- beautiful, It's a beautiful little kind of thing. Absolutely. And I think that is so interesting because sometimes you're just like in this completely like ecstatic state where you make so many connections and oh, wouldn't it be great? Oh, wouldn't it be amazing if this happened? Would it be amazing if this happened? But all of that, I think can only really flourish when you then also have the phase where you say, okay, this is the idea. And now you really neurotically get to work and just like try to work out uh, the method of it all. Actually, I read a fascinating uh, article uh, also like you're getting some like psychology. Oh, no, 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 it has to go oh. everywhere. That. That's the goal of this thing. That's perfect. Oh, okay, because um, it was interesting. It was uh, because the correlation between, between uh, like neuroticism, meaning like yeah. negative affect and uh, creativity is difficult to examine. Because creative, measuring creativity, as you can imagine, is difficult, right? Yes. Because in, in the psychology, like in, in psychologically, in like in psychological um, ways of measuring these traits, it always has to be very precise, and there has to be like a, a, a predetermined way 
to to measure everything. And as you can imagine, with creativity, that's difficult. That's But exactly it was the whole interesting. Thing with this. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry, <laughs> because, you some, <laughs> because some uh, tests for creativity, they um, they uh, measure creativity by amounts of ideas. So amounts of connections you can make in a, a given amount of time. Um, And there's other ways of there's a different way of measuring creativity, which is like the originality of ideas. So you have mm -hmm. people generate ideas, and then you just watch what ones are rare. There are common ones, and then there are rarer ones. And uh, it was actually interesting. This um, it was different. The the, uh, the neuroticism has a different correlation with both of these types of measuring it. Okay. So if you are if if you're very low in neuroticism, you're very like you're very happy, you know, in a good mood. Uh, then you make very very many connections, but not super original. Okay. And when and when you are in more of like a, a, like a neurotic mindset, <laughs> then it is uh, you don't generate as many like connections and as many ideas, but you are far more likely to go very deep into one different aspect, be very detail oriented, and that, that leads you tend like uh, there's a tendency for those ideas to be more original than the others. So I think it's always this give and take. You have to have the moment where you make all your so ecstatic and you make all these connections. But then I think it's important to really just like give it a long, hard look, be very critical with it. And those two, I think, have to sort of balance each other out for the product to, to be worthwhile. The, the way that uh, that perspective that you're looking at that um, duality, it kind of resonates in a certain expression where they say that struggling artists succeed. Because, like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, within that struggle, they kind of find a way to take that um, negative situation and transform it in another way to uh, express it, like, uh, exteriorize it. And more often than not, it comes from a personal place, like you're saying. So the originality maybe stems from there versus when you're getting, like, in a, you're on a high, like you're saying. And those connections are maybe a little bit more on the first level. Like, just on, on, on surface. But like you say, when you take a hard, long look at something, things become more critical and then there's a potential for maybe things to be more uh, refined as they go along, you know? And uh, yeah, very self-analytic. Definitely. And there's always, uh, like, obviously everyone has to find the balance for themselves. But I think it's so interesting. There are certain, like, authors and creators within the magic community where you can tell there is very little, like, this sounds harsh, it doesn't, I don't mean it that way at all. Uh, but there's very little, like, like, actually, like, original, new, connections happening but it's just like a ruthless optimization kind of thing right they just look at something and they just tweak it and they make it more efficient and they make it better and they uh and that all obviously has its place i do agree and obviously also the what if oh what if i connect this with this like it all has its place but uh within the grand scheme of the community but for any given individual there's always the balance you have to try and speaking of like sort of like duality within magic i also think one thing that fascinates me a lot is that there's like the uh that there's like the introvert aspect of it and the extroverted aspect of it yeah. it's like the, there's the sitting alone in your room and yes. just like practicing and shuffling uh which is you know very which, which lends itself very much to people who are very uh, <laughs> sort of obsessive in nature and very yes, totally sort of ner nerdy Uh, but then it also has this like extroverted like showmanship aspect, which is also so funny. And people are so, uh, on such different ends of that spectrum as well, right? Like there are those people who are, it's only about the show and like all like at home you have to do practicing. It's like it's only they're only able to tolerate it by motivating themselves with the showmanship <laughs> aspects of it. Yeah, and there's. And there's then there's the people who uh, who are, for them it's only about this, and then whenever they actually step in front of an audience, it's only it's only the uh, it's only the confirmation that what they worked out is correct. You know, it's only it's, it will see it's it. like it's like hitting enter on the uh, on the calculator. On the keyboard. It's not, yeah, they don't. It's it's not like it's it's not like an actual like worthwhile experience in and of itself. It's like it's just it's like oh yeah, correct. This is yeah. It, this it, point and this. This is, yeah. yeah, this is fooling, cool. <laughs> But that's what I was finding, like, uh, do you know of the term, like, jazz magic? Yeah, of course. Okay, well, see, like, I tend to want to go towards that, where there's 
it's kind of I kind of see it like uh, writing music or learning music because you know that once that you have the core methods, you know the notes, and you rearrange those notes randomly as you go along, like when you're jamming with someone. So you, it's I like the fun of yeah. the unpredictable nature of I want an accident to happen because then I'll it'll give me the challenge of trying rapidly to put the right equation for that puzzle on on the spot. You know, I, I like that and. Mistakes uh, in the worst case scenario, as long as it's not on the first per, per, first trick. If it happens along the way, I don't really mind because it also shows that there is uh, genuine skills that goes into it, and it's not all guaranteed success. And I find also like if you miss one trick, then so often if you go and you, you take out another one, they kind of they start rooting for you a little bit. You know, so then it, it brings a high. So even although that kind of like flow, I find that it could be interesting in a certain way, like more organic, you know? Definitely, this uh, reminds me a little bit of something that uh, Daniel Ortiz uh, talked about this in Electro. Yes, he's very much like that. Where, where he said that um, he had a show and he had Tamaris, you know, watch the show. And after he said, uh, how, how do you like the show? And then uh, Tamaris offered some criticism. And the criticism yeah. was, the problem is, the beginning of your show is very strong. The middle of your show is very strong. <laughs> and the end of your show is very strong. <laughs> and apparently at first, Danny was like, well, how is that? A, how is that an issue? <laughs> uh, but you know, there is some, some truth to that. At some point, you know, some uh, sort of resignation can set in where it's like, yeah. oh, of course, of course, it's going to be the, the card where it's just like, there's no. Exactly. There, there's no, there's no tingle anymore. There's but, no fascination um, because you just know whatever happens is going to be a success. Exactly, but um, so so obviously there's a lot of room for uh, sort of experimenting a bit more and having a bit more vulnerability within magic, which is generally an interesting like thematic premise, like vulnerability within magic. Because yeah. doing magic is inherently suggesting invulnerability. Right? I know. Like it's, inher it's inherently like a very much like a... You know, like the, the confinements of reality and physics exactly. don't bother me. <laughs> and I like the aspect that there is a challenge, like a psychic challenge to make it completely connect 100%, but because of whatever's going on, you don't completely have that 100%. So there's an error, like something happens, you know? Like example, you're doing a divination of a serial number and you missed one number out of all of them, you know? So it suggests that you did have a real contact, but you're just human after all. And so you do have mistakes sit in. Exactly, isn't that in, um, oh, I forget if it's in Magic and Showmanship or in Maximum Entertainment, but in one of those books, there was uh, the example of like a divination of yeah. a, a, a picture. And yeah. uh, it said that it's better if it's like, especially when you like, so, so the audience has like a picture and you draw it. And yeah. it, it, the, the premise was that it's more believable. Exactly. When it's, when it's a little bit off, ah. like it gets the idea across, but it's not exactly the same exactly. image. It's, it makes it more, I, I, I forget which one of those books that was in. Mm. <laughs> For me, it's something that just by looking at Darren Brown work, that that's something that I kind of see how he structured the show. Like he would start with, let's say, a confabulation, so a bunch of different elements, and he would miss only one, one of them would be missed, you know? But then later on, he would recoup the situation and have like success, success, success. Uh, and like you said, like a build up, not necessarily just always super strong, super strong, super strong, super strong. Like there's a build up, you know? Yeah. And sometimes I find this very funny that sometimes it doesn't even need to be. Like in some ways, it doesn't even really need to fail. Like even just like getting the idea across that it could have failed very quickly. Exactly. It's like just like like the the old like thing of like Vernon turning the cards, right? If you don't, yeah, like you turn it like dramatically. But like even yeah. just like with three of, you know, just like a little moment, I of like and, right, and then it's still okay. This isn't it's a mean place, it's joke, but. I know. But it's so funny, right? Just like this little, and like just like a little implication of something could have gone wrong. Wouldn't it have been cool if this would have been right? And then you show up. Like, <laughs> so the whole premise of this, uh, well, the show is called uh, The Process. And from my research, uh, I realized that there seems to be a structure to actually developing an idea. And the goal of this is, well, there's a couple of objectives I wanted to attain with this. Uh, one would be to leave a tool behind, like online, whatever, so that people can look at this and realize that there's a commonality 
among creators to how they go about their ideas, you know, not necessarily by revealing their methods per se, but perspective on developing ideas. Uh, hopefully, one th that the series is done, because I would like to do uh, between 10 and 12 within the illusion community, then that would be a block. And then I'll do the same thing with, let's say, maybe musicians or chefs, you know. And I, I chose the illusion part first because my background is in uh, uh, research and development, marketing and advertising, which is, for me, as, uh, another form of illusion in a, in a certain sense, you know, because you're selling the idea of something and they have the experience when they're uh, unpacking the object. And uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. I was working for a perfume company and uh, a lot of the energy and the budget were, went into the packaging so that the experience of the woman opening it, the sounds of like the material coming apart, the velvet, when they open it up, the first smell they get. So that experience is condensed into one push. So they have one push. So maybe there's a hundred pushes in there, but when they get over that bottle, they want to relive the first experience. So the, it regenerates that thing when they empty it. And then it, the bottom too has to be a little bit heavy, you know, because it implies that it's, it's value and all that. So there's a whole um, psychological aspect to that, you know? So I kind of got fed up with doing that for like commercial work and said, I want to reorient this into illusions, you know? So just like I was explaining earlier, uh, it's kind of like learning music. I found out there are certain methods of what you need to do. Uh, overall, the ideas are quite simple. Something disappears, it reappears and all that. Um, and that's it. So I decided I want to do a series where we go over these steps. And from my understanding, these steps are, well, the first one would be um, your inspiration. What you do on a, on a regular basis to stay inspired. You go to movies, you read books, you meditate, whatever. Step number two would be incubation. So do you need to say to yourself, listen, I want these ideas to marinate when, when I decide I want to sit down from nine to five in my day and that's my time that's dedicated to thinking or are you just a free thinker when you have an idea that appears how do you go about uh incubating the th third step would be illumination so that's like the eureka moment uh example for me when that happens let's say if i'm if i'm sleeping because sometimes my ideas tend to um gel like during the night like uh, I, I need to wake up and I'll work on it until it's finished. So I'll have like two, three days, no sleeping, whatever, you know. So what happens to you? How do you uh, approach that when you have the illumination? Uh, step four would be the exploration. So are you the type of person where you do several mock-ups of that one idea, have them compete against each other? Uh, do you take one idea and try to cut away the fat? Do you have other people give you feedback while you're developing the idea? Do you want to have that reserved until I get, like how do you go about that? And then the final step, uh, implementation. Uh, some people, for them, that whole process, for them, the ecstatic moment is finding the solution to the puzzle. When they get to that step five, they don't really need to see the product have a life of its own and go outside, you know? Um, how do you implement that idea for yourself? Is it something that you'd like to share? Is it something that you'd like to keep? Is there, like, how do you resonate with that? So for step one, your uh, inspiration. What does Mark Mueller do for inspiration? Uh, so I like to uh, to read a lot of like magic books. Uh, like I, whenever I'm just like, for example, right now I'm very much into Paul Curry. Okay. Um, and uh, right, I like to think that uh, Pitt Hartling once said this to me. It was like, without input, there's no output. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think it's like I, I I personally find that I profit quite a lot from just like having a lot of reading a lot of card tricks and just like having a lot of card tricks go through my head before then trying to see the, the commonality because I'm not one of those people who just like grabs an idea out of thin air or it's like very rarely that happens. Most of the time it's uh, like a combination of various different things and obviously to make connections you need to have knowledge of the individual components of it. Uh, but other than that, I just like try to to live life, you know, I just like hang out with friends, I like to do sports, I like to read in other areas. And I think, I think it's very healthy in a way to just like do things that are fun for you. Yes. And then, and then just like see if that will amount to anything creatively. Yeah. But, but um, I, I had this because... I used to be much more obsessed with magic than I than I am now. Um, because like magic used to be really like all that I 
in, mm -hmm. in my in my free time and um and in recent years you know just like moving out of my parents place you know and be you know meeting other people from other like walks of life uh i think i've like broadened a little bit as a person mm -hmm. you know i've developed other interests you know photography i like i like running recently i've been getting into chess and um and i used to only do other things outside of magic with the intention of it yeah. having a positive benefit towards my magic mm -hmm. and that is quite unhealthy for being honest so yeah it's just like just do things that are fun and if anything c c comes of it great and if nothing comes of it you still had a great time so, of course. <laughs> yeah so, so, I, so i would say it's, it's quite uh, boring perhaps but you know just like watching a lot of magic reading a lot of magic but see like uh, just in your background we could tell like oh there's a little bit of magic with the poster uh you're into sports like uh, this i know there's books you read you have a martial thing so you must be into music as well so i think just overall uh even with like, you're saying your your family background and stuff uh maybe it was a fertile ground for you to grow just as a naturally creative uh, and um, uh, explorative kind of nature Definitely, just like uh, I think Einstein once said, "There's like there's two ways to live your life: like as if nothing is a miracle, and as if everything is a miracle." Oh, and I definitely miracle. lean towards the uh, the latter. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just like oh, yeah. I'm just like constantly fascinated by things. I just want to hunt. And you're you're part of a, a generation like when you came into existence. The timeline is like you're experiencing something that many many other generations. Like couldn't anticipate at all, you know, and it's quite drastic because it's affecting already, but it's going to have a, a way bigger impact. I I think that uh, the social connections, you know, it's uh, right now because of the COVID and all the situation, people are more isolated, and they tend to have more connections virtually. You know, uh, I was explaining to uh, like my child, it'd be fun for for them to still know what a nightclub is. Where you go out and all you have to do is uh, maybe have a couple of drinks just to like uh, make yourself uh, more social, like you know, and uh, you enjoy music and you talk to people more in proximity because it's too loud. Like there's a whole experience there. So I'm wondering how is that going to have an impact, like for people of your generation, you know? It, it's so fascinating because um, you know the pandemic obviously changed so much about the way that, especially like just like university students live their life because. Before it was really like what you're describing is like how it worked. You know, you you would go to to a lecture or something, and then afterwards, yeah, like the, everyone would be standing in front of the classroom and be like, you know, what, what now? And then one way I would be like, oh, let's go there, and, uh, and you know, it's it's like all very very fluid, uh, and it's all very unplanned, and that was I think uh, a part of life that got very much lost in the pandemic because. Any social interaction would now need to be conscious. It would need to be planned. Yes, which very is, much. Which, which, yeah, which is obviously, obviously uh, different, you know. But yeah, I would say, you know, I, I, maybe this is like uh, trying desperately trying to find a positive aspect in it. But I'm actually kind of, I wouldn't say grateful, but <laughs> but I, I think I've to a certain extent profited from the pandemic. Just like individually, because you know, just like being left to your own devices and really yes. just like having to, because like so much like external motivation is taken away, and to really like keep up any sort of like rhythm or routine in that time is pretty can be pretty difficult. And I've experienced this with uh, with running, especially. Okay, um, yeah. You know, just like doing that in the pandemic yeah. was a lot more difficult than it is now. Like with people, just like meeting other people on runs, you know, it's it's very very much different. And I would say that, you know, it's it's like it's so often it's like training, you know, it's like you go through like a more challenging experience, and then as a result, the the baseline feels easier, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah. So once that you have all of that inspiration built up. Uh, do you have an approach for like the step two, the incubation? Do you need to sit down specifically to generate ideas or uh, like I was saying, you, you just leave things slow, maybe it happens when you're running. Uh, like do you specifically dedicate times in your week or in your days for creation? Um, I do more than I used to um, because, you know, just like having more other areas I'm interested in, 
uh, I find it becomes more and more important to just like set time of, apart, especially for for magic. Um, and then I think it very much depends on the idea, uh, like what I'm trying to work on. It's like a very intuitive sort of thing. What I think I need for this specific problem I'm working on. Like sometimes I will just like hop on a FaceTime call and just like jam on ideas yeah. or something. Um, and then sometimes it will be uh, very different. Sometimes it will be when I feel like, you know, there's sometimes you just have this sort of intuition like, oh, I bet other people have had good solutions for this. And then yeah. sometimes, and sometimes you have an idea where you think, okay, this is completely new ground. I don't think like looking at many different references would be of much use here. Uh, so I think it, it, it very much, it, it very much depends how exactly and also it depends, I think, on whether or not it's like a very technical problem, or like a mm -hmm. um, or a more abstract problem. Because uh, I think for technical stuff, it's like super straightforward. I sit in front of a mirror, or and then later I sit in front of the camera and I just drill, you know, and I try to find, yeah. I find, I try to find motivations for it. I try to find uh, movements in which it fits or something. Um, and but I definitely think I am the kind of person who likes to generate a lot of different uh, ideas and then uh, have them compete, as you I think you, yeah. you mentioned earlier. It's like uh, you know many different versions are good because it's like uh, it's kind of like chess. You know, there's like always variations. Yeah, there's there's always Which these. Is the most optimal. <laughs> exactly, and uh, and sometimes people stop thinking too soon. I think, oh, and I, I stop thinking too soon because it's yeah. like. Because it's like, okay, so, okay, you're, okay, what you're doing here is you use this control to get yeah. the card to the top. Okay, so, and then I think it's interesting to ask yourself, okay, what other methods are there for getting the card to the top? And how do they differ in terms of maintaining perhaps the order of the other cards in the deck? And through that just like sort of love of variation, you might end up finding something where just like the gears fit perfectly and it's yeah. just like aha like this moment <laughs> and, where it just like turns you on how well it fits but i think uh, a big part is i'm just like very very turned on by things being better than they could have been yeah like w w when i look at something you know like a photograph for example by Arisa, like or a short story that i love or a novel whatever like when I like it, I, I always try to like experiment. Okay, would it still be this good if? Yeah. And and oftentimes when things are actually genuinely like really really good, oftentimes the answer for every single one of it's those variations yes. is no. No, well, no, no. <laughs> I, I forget how I phrased it. Well, okay. So it's it, it, it's it, it's good exactly the way it is. Yeah, exactly. That's what yeah. I mean to say. Like, like it, it any variation any of the test. Yeah, any variation would be worse and sometimes yeah. you look you look at magic tricks like that you like you, you read them it's like a like a methodological construction it's like none of these things could be replaced like if if okay if i okay, okay maybe i don't like the move mm -hmm. he, he used here but if it wasn't that move then the next thing would be so much more complicated and this actually exactly. gets you right into position for the, the, and, and i think the only way of coming up with things besides you know luck occasionally is to actually consciously have those variations, you know? There's always, the, for example, if, if it's like a, a three move sequence, like, okay, the card needs to be controlled, the cards needs to be switched, and the card needs to be switched back. Like, yeah. just like, you have to have a list of things to accomplish A, a list, of, like in your head, I don't write this down. <laughs> a list of things to accomplish A, a list of things to accomplish B, a list of things to accomplish C. And now you're looking for the, the path, right? You're looking for the, yeah. the path that makes sense in, internally. You, know? you find people like when I, I discussed with that, and I found like when I first started uh, with like the uh, card magic, uh, you know, you want to mingle with other cards, so you know, you join the magic uh, circle in your area, or whatever. And I find that is it just me, or there's some sense of sometimes certain magicians would rather make a super technical move invisible rather than just going ahead and doing the easy thing like there's some sort of pride that's yeah, there that the, <laughs> i don't you know what i mean like there's something there that for me it, it just makes it more complicated for nothing and it's something that benefits no one in the performance i mean besides yeah. so of the the performer saying that i was able to do something that is 
quite difficult that even master magicians maybe aren't able to master uh, and no one saw it so i don't some, understand sometimes that kind of um intent is it an intent like i don't understand like does that happen sometimes or uh like would you rather go for the simple thing sometimes, sometimes like i want to try and pull off the super hard thing sometimes there's certain so I am also like apart from its usefulness. I'm just like I am very I'm into technique. I enjoy yeah. the, the mechanical aspect of it, and I just enjoy practicing it, even if it might not have the most direct application. But the the interesting part is that uh, that at some point you like build up your toolbox, right? You have yeah. your box with all all your different tools, and um, and at some point like. Uh, like you know that uh, Maslow had this like quote, which was like, uh, if if, uh, if your only tool is a hammer, every problem begins to look like a nail. Oh, right? sure, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Where, where you stop being objective yeah. because you, you only have a hammer, so every, you use it for everything. But mm -hmm. I think you can take this one step further because even if you have super, a lot of tools, yeah, right, it's still your feelings towards them that can determine when you use it and when you don't. Yeah. For example, let's say you have like a complete toolbox, you have everything, right? Yeah. But you are very much into the hammer. You, you yeah. bought a very nice one. It's, it's, it has your, your initials. Yeah. Okay, it has your initials engraved. Right? I like that. It's yeah. very nice. You have a photograph of it. You have it on your wall. But right? <laughs> you have an Instagram. You made an Instagram account for yeah. all the things your hammer is up to. Right? You're very proud. You polish and every. You know, of course, you're going to use the hammer, and that is, uh, and that is, I think, uh, an interesting problem. Uh, it's an interesting problem because it's somebody just stop being objective, right? It's like, okay, do yeah. I use this technique that's like anyone can do, or yeah. do I use this technique that I have spent months of my life <laughs> practicing, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's like, because you, you take the ability from yourself to be objective about these yeah. things. Well, it's so, also, <laughs> I think uh, it's like your trophy that you can give yourself of you've achieved the confidence to do this masterfully. <laughs> With yeah. elegance. So it's something that maybe when you do it, each time you do it, it's like it's pride a little bit for you, you know? Definitely. But but sometimes there are moments where um, where it, it does just get better. Like the hard technique is just like genuinely better. Yeah. Like, it's just like gen there is just like a different yeah. thing to it. For example, this is arguable and people have different opinions, this, but I personally truly believe that the DMB is a step above the normal convincing control just because mm -hmm. the card is sticking out the entire time you know it's there's yeah. no moment there, and you don't have to consciously outdrop the card yourself it, it is just the outdrop the entire time i think that is better personally yeah and, and 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 when it is you know then i think no amount of effort well different people they have different priorities in life there's nothing wrong with saying okay i just do these things but for people who are willing to who care us very, very much about the end product and are willing to put a lot of things in life behind the the, yeah. the, the artistic endeavor. Uh, I think no amount of work should be like at, at this like sort of level that I s like to pursue in magic. There's yeah. it, it's too difficult as a shitty reason not to do something. No, that is that, you yeah. know that is a, that is a that is a good such that a is a, oh, <laughs> one thousand percent. That is a it's true because. If you really want, well, I guess it depends on your desire. Like, if you yeah. really want it, nothing's going to be an obstacle to that. Not time, not the effort. Not, like, you, like you said, at a certain point in your life, everything was driven towards the objective of, of magic. So if you have that passion in you and you're stri striving to be able to have that incredible hammer, uh, you're just going to be daydreaming until you get to it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but it's it's always difficult because different people have just like very different priorities. I think um, so. If, for for example, as like someone who wants to learn like one or two card tricks, like right for like performing yeah. for the for their friends at a bar, um, that is a very respectable like goal within magic. That that also besides like the completely obsessed putting everything behind, just like the final result, getting it as good as it can get. That is also completely valid and for those people obviously difficulty is a valid a valid yeah. concern but but it's like i think you have to be very conscious how much energy eg you're willing to put into different aspects of your life because yeah. i think this is sort of like my idea of like the perfect life it's like when everything 
in your life takes up exactly the amount of space yeah or and time that you wanted to right everything is you have an unforeseen event like a child <laughs> yeah it's, it's exactly the the the, the 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 amount of time and energy you're willing to give it is exactly the amount of energy and time it takes up in your life no, that's a and, that's a beautiful for, world yeah. <laughs> so for example so so maybe i have to like take that back a little bit like uh not uh, not doing something because it's too hard is a shitty reason for someone like me who is yeah but it that has the opportunity like very, it has a very high it's a very high standing because there are chess players who would scoff at my unwillingness to learn all the opening theory lines to the to, to the 15th move you know there's people who would scoff at that and they would say oh that's a shitty reason <laughs> but, but it, it all depends on priorities right we are talking about the thing that i'm very very passionate about yeah. <laughs> like see i find that sometimes in my case if i start practicing something that's above my skill level um there's certain times because depending on your like your physical uh, traits i'm not able to do it exactly the same way as the as the the lesson implied but then sometimes when i continue moving on it and i adapt it to my needs it, it becomes something else you know maybe not better or or you know maybe not worse but it's just it's another way of doing the same thing you know and i find that sometimes when you kind of um not give up along the way because it's not it, you're not technically achieving it like over a certain amount of time you realize like it's just not the way i'm able to do it it'll drive you to maybe find another solution you know yeah definitely sometimes like restriction is very is like is, is, is creatively very is. very helpful you know because it's, yeah. oftentimes it can be very overwhelming overwhelming there's so many things so i think that is honestly the reason so many people aside from just like the ego of like oh i do everything side of hand only no gimmicks but i think that's a big reason people discard gimmicks because it just it's it, it's too much to to think about then you know there's just like there's no confidence in the end in the decision that you made right yeah. i'm i'm sure i'm sure like if you're marketing i'm sure you know the the, the like study where it's like uh the more amount of choices you have in the beginning the least satisfied you will be with the one you chose in the end totally. yeah. so so sometimes restriction is uh, is a very uh, is is for your cognitive like health it is a very good uh, yeah. good thing to have so if you just like discard something here and you say okay no, no, this is the gimmicks part and this is the stuff that is too hard and this is the thing and then you will be very much much more satisfied with what, <laughs> <laughs> with what you ended up with if, if those are just, if you just like choose for those not to be an option but but that's like that, that's like a behavior like it's very natural right but sometimes it's like you know but this is again like the the passion aspect of it you know i don't magic has a value in my life that goes beyond being happy right yeah. and i th i think it's that way for a lot of people with their passion you know it's like i'm willing to be very unsatisfied with the thing i'm i'm left with if in the, in the very depth of of me i know that the results better i don't feel like it's better i mean, i don't like it as much as i would have if i had to <laughs> limit it myself but yeah. you know <laughs> totally so let's say you incubate you come up step three eureka how does that happen you're on a bike ride is it more uh, do you meditate by any chance uh yeah <laughs> i have absolutely no idea it's like sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't and it's like i have discovered no sort of uh uh i've discovered no rules by which that happens or but like happen. i know that when uh <laughs> Like let's say when uh, the gears subconsciously match, like because sometimes it happens uh, in like sleeping or in meditating or uh, like you say in a mindless activity like running because you're kind of just like in a channel of vision or bike riding, and sometimes those elements I find they tend to want to uh, connect better than when you're just mm -hmm. like uh, on a on a task that requires attention. Now that you mention it, I think it helps when I've taken a break before. I, I don't often have good ideas just like out of nothing, like just like I'm I, like I don't I don't like I think it's happened to me once where I actually like, I had had a good idea on a run. I guess I think yeah. it's happened to me once. Uh, but 
but after the run, I think it was so if you were just like okay. practicing, you were working on the problem, and it was just like too much. You know, ah, I have to get out of yeah. here. You've got your running shoes. You go, you, you go for for a good one run, uh, and then after, if I sit back down at the table, I look at it freshly. Yeah. Think, now that you mention it, that might be uh, that that might be sort of a general. Okay. Yeah. Rule. And when you feel that it clicks like that, and you have the like, you feel that okay, you got the, that key that unlocks that. It's gonna make the idea work, you know. Do you need to like dive into it, and that consumes every minute until it? Yeah, I have to. It is very interesting to me. Like, um, Gabi Pereira's uh, apparently once said that when I have like a really good idea, I sense so much potential, uh, I, I go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, no. Uh, and what happens after that? <laughs> Which and yeah, well, and then he works on it the, the next day because you know uh, it's, apparently that was the. Wouldn't the be thing. able to. Uh, yeah, it's same for me. Like I think, uh, yeah. So so when I have the when I sense there's something there, it can yeah. be very. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, I would say I'm the diving head first. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, you just like. Sometimes I jokingly say when people ask about like grand I say I just throw obsessive behavior at it until it's finished. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's much it. Yeah. And they find like if you're in a relationship with like a your partner or like I'm lucky my wife and the children they understand that that's the nature of what I do. So there's no real timeline to when I have an idea, you know. And they know they recognize yeah. when I'm on something. Like I'm completely. Um, consumed by that you know until it's done you know and sometimes it might mean not sleeping or whatever you know but uh i kind of i kind of enjoyed that because i it's like a heightened state a little bit where the, I, I find that it, uh, it kind of makes me feel like um i kind of like channeled something and i need to get it out fast before i forget a little element of it Definitely, and I think I have. Um, do you do you keep a notebook? Do you uh, like have? Yeah. Do you feel need to? Yeah. A journal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, how would you? How finished would you say are the ideas you write down? Is it more like really like, just like a bullet journal where it's just like? Uh, the way that I would set it up is that sometimes uh, even I was talking about this with other interview people. Uh, it could be sometimes only a title, and that title is so evocative that I, it makes me want to build something around that. You know. So then I like those the best because I can kind of go through all the other pages. And like we were saying that you have little mm -hmm. bits and pieces and I try to put them together with that, you know? So there's no one specific method. It's like uh, the general concept that is the objective and how I get to that is uh, whatever it takes kind of thing, you know? Definitely. I think it's so interesting because um, there is obviously a certain privilege associated with this say, oh, when I have an idea, I just like work, put everything aside, yeah. I work on it immediately. Because that's not possible for everyone, right? No. I'm in, in, in my phase of life, I'm very uh, lucky to so that most of the things on my to do list are very fluid and like I can do them whenever, basically. Yeah. You know, that there's, uh, and that is quite a luxury, you know, like, <laughs> of course, I have certain things at university, like, especially now that it's, uh, that it's, um, it's like in real life and actually on campus again i do have like certain things we have to be at a certain place at a certain time but especially during corona um where, where the pandemic when we did everything from home it like yeah. it was like a video like the, the lecture was a video you could look at it any time and that was uh and that was very uh very freeing obviously because think about it, like my entire day was completely fluid you know, I wanted to do, go for a run, yeah. I wanted to do some magic, I wanted to do uh, university stuff, have some like house chores, and blah, but it's like, oh, it's completely yeah. interchanged. <laughs> There's no... <laughs> no real structure, but I kind of like it like that because, again, like uh, in my past life working for agencies versus now, they kind of, I won't say put a gun to your head to have ideas during the block of time that you're there, but being a creative person isn't a job, I would say. It's, it's more like a lifestyle because it's it, it's it's a uh, it's always in constant flux. It's always changing. It depends on your moods. It, it, it depends on everything, you know. So I find it's fun for me to like have multiple projects going at the same time, because certain of them like you know they're not completely finished. Or, so I kind of like tend that when I'm at a roadblock with one, I'll take a break with something, maybe a run or whatever, and then I want to go back to something else, you know. Yeah. Definitely. That's so interesting. I'm um, really curious to see 
how my relationship with magic and creativity is going to change as I grow older because yeah because I I don't want to be like a full-time magician that is not the the plan right now you know the plan is to to become a psychotherapist or a psychologist yeah. in a different field at some point um and that is for sure going to change my relationship to to it to it a lot right um and I'm very curious to see how that will evolve because I think it will go more towards the direction where I have a great idea and then I write it down and I say okay it's for later you know and because I have clients i have family perhaps or like something it's like people demanding my my attention my time deserving it uh so so yeah this is gonna be interesting interesting to see i'm uh, so so uh to anyone watching who's like uh, thinking like oh uh, well <laughs> i can't just like well you're gonna be able to look at my it. ear it's like i'm very well aware of like the privileged like <laughs> young oh. university student <laughs> perspective of this <laughs> But at the same time, we work for this kind of lifestyle, so it's not uh, a given, you know? It's, there's choices yeah. that, that lead you on this path, and it's not for everyone either, because you have to be able to deliver at the end of the day something. You can't just be a free thinker and not have something, you know, contribute to society and make money. Like, there's a structure that, at the end of the day, you have to be um, efficient and uh, viable, you know? Yeah. So it's always nice to have things whenever you want, but you, know, you still owe it to yourself and other people. Like you have responsibilities, whatever happens, you know. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think like this, um, probably the more, more like playful sort of creativity that's like completely removed from any like uh, uh, need for efficiency or productivity. Uh, that is, I think, great and very oftentimes that's where the best ideas come from, I find. I find too. But probably that is going to become less and less because, yeah, you know, if, if you have like a job and everything, family, wife, perhaps, or whatever, like, you know, you can't, as a, it's difficult to be like, okay, today I will just like work outside and maybe, probably nothing is going to come of the entire day today. You know, yeah, I'm still gonna have a backlog of things. I mean, De yeah, definitely. You know what I mean, like you're always gonna, and maybe at that point for Iran, well, first of all, your reputation goes up, so your price is not the same. You know, so the less time yeah. that you work, you're gonna have almost the same ratio of income because just yeah. a, you know, like that happens. The quality of the ideas are gonna get better. The ones that were almost finished and were the, like maybe epic and that had something that would really contribute to the magic community at that point maybe those will be like ignited. There's a whole a bunch of other things waiting for you ahead. And now with this reporting, you're going to be able to, when you have the children and everything, look back on this and like, I was already thinking about my kids. <laughs> yeah. So step four, well, we already did the, uh, the, the Eureka, but step four, the exploration, like we were just saying, you have your ideas compete against each other and stuff like that. You tend to, um, well, like we were saying, um, have multiple things at the same time. Do you have people give you input? Like you seem to mention that you jam with people. Do you jam with people even when it's still in the development stage? Uh, I'll give an explanation for that. I was talking about this, like I said, with other people. For me personally, I tend to be a little bit more like, a, not, I don't know if it's greedy, but it's like, a, I want to work on it the most I can until the end. So that it's like, it's mine, you know, because yeah. I like having ideas come in to make it better when it's at that point. but. There's certain times where I wanted to be uh, of my own creation, you know, and limit the input coming in because I feel it'll become a collaboration at a certain point, you know. So how do you go about that exploration part? Um, I would say that in general, I'm quite like reclused in that. Is that a word, reclused? Yeah, like, reclused. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> it's the English second language. Okay. Uh, I would say I'm, I don't really just, uh, like get so much feedback in the development phase. There's one exception. I have one very good friend, Simon Black from Chicago, and uh, with him I sometimes face time when it's like nothing yet. Uh, but uh, that only works because we have very di in similar tastes, and okay. we uh, we have like uh, we have been such good friends for such a long time that it's just like we know what each other is thinking and we know what what each person is sort of like looking for in mm -hmm. the specific routine right now. Um, but in general, I am not a fan of having too much input at an early stage. No. Because in German, there's a, um, there's a saying, which is like, uh, zu viele Köche verderben den Brei, which, is, um, which means like too many cooks 
in the yeah like ruined the, ruined the in food. the kitchen will ruin the sauce yeah 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 exactly um, yeah. um which i think there's much truth to that because yeah. there's no singular vision behind it in the end right because That's... what's critical for you might not be critical for someone else so <laughs> exactly yeah, think, yeah. So, so when i when i do then so when i do have something to show people like you know there's like a certain thing and there's actually like a certain part where i can't I, I'm, i'm stuck i can't get further um i show it to people but before i want to hear anything they have to say about it I lay out what I am looking for. This is what I like about it. This is my vision behind it. This is where I want it to be. And then it's like, okay, what ideas do you have within those confinements? And that's also always the first question I ask when people ask me for feedback because I don't know what to say. I could I could now say the things that I would want it to be, but th th that's maybe not the way you want it to be. So like, exactly. I think the first question should always be, okay, what do you like about what you just showed me? And then based on that, we can jam together. But in that moment, I am in service of you and your vision. This is exactly, not, yeah. I, 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 don't, yeah. I don't usually like a lot of like collaboration. It's like, no, there's uh, there's, yeah. there's a dynamic. It's like, this is my idea. Yeah. This is my vision. This yeah. is what I want it to be. And then the other person can, within those confinements, offer like some objective or comments or, yeah. or ideas. Yeah. But um, then again, you have to have the confidence, like you're saying, you're able to do that with your friend from Chicago because he knows how you're thinking and he wants to be constructive on your. Uh, oh, what happened? Oh, oh, it's gone again. One second. Yeah, I was no just like, getting. One second. Oh, yeah, correct. Uh, I was just getting a bunch of messages. I just like put my phone on mute so it doesn't like. Fit. Great. No <laughs> But I'm back. Um, also, I think that that because it's going to depend on your network of people who you show these things to because certain times. People have an ego and don't want to voluntarily put some of their ideas in, inject that in there, you know, instead of having just uh, um, objective regard on it and to help it uh, achieve like what you like in that thing, like you just said, you know. And oftentimes, like, I, I often think about this with like books that I love or movies that I love or anything that I love, really. Like, oftentimes, what I admire about it is the. Um, Is, is the, um, uh, what, how do you say it? Um, like, like how the, the, what, 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 the product is just like so, such a unique, you can tell it's a product of such a unique vision and you can tell it's the direct product of that vision. It's not like an indirect uh, way, it's not, it's not like a, a mess of like super It's not dynamic by something else. It's, it's like it's, a yeah, it's, form, yeah. It, it is one, like, I think the art that I really admire is just like, it's 100% determined by what someone wanted it to be. Yeah. And maybe I don't like it, but it's still, it's, that's yeah. so, so much better than having just like something where it's like, I want to be able to ask the person who made what I'm looking at yeah. to, to be actually be able to tell me why they made the decisions they made is like, yeah like because like sometimes with like modern movies with like the whole like um with the whole like studio system and everything i don't think like a lot of things that bother me about movies i don't think i could ask the director why to do that and, and he would give me a, a, a reason that's like oh i love it because of this i think oftentimes the answer would be ah and this and that and this guy said and it wasn't possible uh, uh, and that's yeah. not It's you want like you have the direct contact to the um, like the essence, the essence of it, and if there's yeah. too many elements going into that, it dilutes it. And and, and 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 like some of like greatest like works of art, like that just like shattered boundaries within like the like forever, basically. Yeah. Uh, like, what would someone have said if they had asked? You know, like what if Picasso had been like, "What do you think about this?" And then someone had been like, "Yeah, I think." <laughs> I think it should be like more like realistic. I don't really, I don't really get what you're going for here. You know, it's like. But you say that now, and it's or, like... or like Dali. You know, someone was like, "Yeah, but I don't get why you wouldn't. Why, why, why are the clocks melting? Like okay, clocks so melt. What do, you think would, what do you think that he would answer? Oh, the Picasso or Dali? Yeah, I think he would say it's be, the reason why is because you're an idiot. You don't understand why that you're not there yet. I think that that's what he would say. 
probably that is why they are Picasso and Dali because yeah. they are so they they are so convinced of their vision that they would yeah that, that they wouldn't give a shit right they would, they would not give a shit, shit about that and, and, and pretty that conversation would have never happened because Dali would have never asked anyone <laughs> exactly of, of the thing and I don't, you know and obviously we are not the pure geniuses but uh, where it's but Well, speaking of myself only, Pavel, you, you may be added me. <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, like, you're a genius. Uh, I think that years, ahead, like, along the road, it's because it's so different now, like, with everything. Like, you're saying there's so many inputs coming into creativity at this point. And with the internet, and it's all become, like, mashed a bit. It's very hard, like, to find an original source, you know? But as, as long as I think that we're trying to push innovative ideas and I, just thinking, I just like I, with this project thing, it's really about trying to have better methods of thinking and better ideas, you know? Uh, genius wise, I mean, I would like, for me, genius is like, um, I would say like an uh, autistic person could be genius. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's something there where there's capacities that, of understanding that It's just not common. It's like neurologically not the same thing, you know? But I think in our own way, we try to input something that is like meant to be, um, it's like the stem of something to be built upon for later on, you know? Like yeah, I think I that you know. from chatting with you, I don't think like uh, if someone along the road uh, discovered your method and, and then maybe just did something another step higher or whatever, that you wouldn't be mad at that. No, no, no. You I, know what I mean? I, I'd be ecstatic. Like maybe there was a small moment like how I did not think of that. But in general, it's like I care about I care about things being better a lot. <laughs> so, exactly. the thing? There's a difference so when they can be from that, and that is the only way of doing it, and it's the best. Versus, I hope that I'm going to do something that, for the time being, it's going to bring a lot of enjoyment, and hopefully, someone will take this and just whoo, destroy me and bring it to another yeah. level. Yeah, but that's, there's a difference there. Level five, after all this water. Uh, so it's the implementation. So for you, uh, do you have a desire, like you want to have, when you come to the end of an idea, to like find a way to uh, have it have a life of its own and it becomes like a product? Uh, is that something that for you is like, it's, uh, if it happens, it happens. Uh, as long as I come to term with some ideas along the road, um, or maybe is it just that when the challenge for you, like I was saying earlier, is that cracking the nut, like finding the way to like solve that puzzle and then that is ecstatic moment and the rest is just like extra work. Like some people just don't like yeah. that part of the idea is done, now I have to sell it. Like, ah, shit, no, like, you know, some people hate yeah. that. Definitely, I think w with magic it's quite unique because You know, magic doesn't exist, obviously, but you know, the, the, the impossibility doesn't exist, but the experience of the impossibility does exist in the mind of the exactly. spectator. You can, yeah. you can make the experience yeah. real, right? So yeah. with magic, the ultimate evaluator of it, whether it's good or not is the audience. You know, that, that is that is the the end all be all to a certain extent. Yeah. If, like if the idea is beautiful and ah, oh, but it's just like people go like, oh, it's not. No, it's meant that, to. It, 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 it didn't story. work. Yeah. It didn't work, right? If if you say because a lot of like uh, creating magic is built on like um, on, it's like, like a bit of a leap of faith, right? Mm -hmm. Like because like think about like super um, like I think I'm I'm fascinated by like just, like discrepancies. You know, where things yeah, don't yeah. make entirely sense, like cross-cut force or something. Those things are just like, ha, ah, you know, or like the Kelly deck turnover or something. Yeah. Those things are like amazing to me, but those are only, you have to try them out to see if they, no. if they yeah. work. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I definitely, <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely, uh, love that aspect of it, but, yeah. um, But, that's But I, I would say it has gone beyond that recently, um, where now like performance is not just you, for me, just like the idea, oh, this worked, nice. Yeah. Uh, but it's also like, I genuinely like more and more to like give people this experience that, you know, that, that is what I, what I've spent so much time acquiring the tools 
to give people this experience. So obviously, it has a fulfilling. Yeah. It, it is very fulfilling to see it. Uh, to see it in action. And I have. I have. Uh, I have, I have to see it in action. There are. Well, it's like it definitely with the routines that I'm actually like. I actually develop them to perform them. I'm, I'm actually. I, I put um, everything I have into into them. Those are made for performance, and that those are those need to be performed in yeah. my in my personal opinion. But sometimes you just have academic ideas. Yeah. Sometimes there's like I, sometimes, and those are the kinds of ideas oftentimes that come about with chatting with Simon or something. Where it's like, oh, isn't this like a crazy way to like do this routine instead? But this. We are both very well aware that that is in that moment a playful academic yeah. idea, and it might then later turn into an actual performance piece. But uh, yeah, but I would say for actual performance piece that are developed for performance, uh, I, I couldn't just let them sit in a drawer, right? It doesn't feel right. That's not what it was meant to. Yeah, no, totally, I agree. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and uh, to bring it into uh, well, for right now, you're known, for, I think, for like more methods. I saw that you released. Uh... Was it a book recently, or? Yeah, yeah, I did. I uh, I wrote a uh, book in German. You? Uh, with uh, yeah, that was um, I actually I I don't often feel like pride with like things I've done. I'm like very perfectionistic. I always so I find the flaws in it. Uh, but actually, I'm quite satisfied with uh, with how that turned out and the responses I got and people sending messages that they actually perform it and yeah, that's uh, I think yeah, eight routines. It's uh, four essays. Okay. Uh, all in German and mostly, uh, mostly, yeah. I think all card magic except for one uh, thing with a pen. So no coin magic. I said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and that was uh, that was incredibly fulfilling to to release and see people's responses to it. I have to see. I kind of I, I sort of promised uh, on Instagram that I would translate it to English, but uh, yeah, it's I have. Um, Trans- yeah, yeah, I have to. I, I, I will. Uh, that it is on a to do list. I will see how that goes. But with all the other things, it's uh, it can be hard to set the, set the time I have apart for to just like do this, because that is the kind of work that I do for university. You know, like it's like sort of like dry. It can be sometimes a little bit dry, you know. Yeah. And then when I go home, I want to have like more playful aspects of magic. I don't want to live, sit there and type a text. <laughs> We will see. Oh, I, I will see. I will see how that goes. But hopefully, I definitely there will be. It will come out in English in one form or another. Uh, hopefully soon. Maybe it will be part of like a larger book when I have more stuff to add to it or something. But uh, we, we will see. It will. It will happen. <laughs> oh well, listen. I think that's a really great endeavor. And like a, a book, what's fun about that is that it's something that can uh, withstand the test of time. Like depending on the number of, of you know what I mean. It's, for me, I like those little things that you can leave and they'll be there after you're gone, you know? Like it's something like a testament Definitely. of, you know, what you try to imply. So for sure, like that's gonna leave its trace and, you know, hopefully grow into something else, yeah? And uh, going into the future, I really hope that you'll uh, continue the, this pursuit, this endeavor, and, you know, uh, for sure, uh, it's something uh, very uh, inspiring to look at from a distance and a great opportunity to, uh, it's a privilege like to finally chat with you and. It's the same uh, personality of what we get uh, in your photos. The smiling gentleman, uh, you know, uh, very enlightened uh, beyond your years. And uh, it was really super fun chatting with you. I hope that uh, the whole thing for you was uh, was enjoyable as well. Absolutely, likewise, thank you. I often find, I find it very uh, rewarding. Uh, sometimes I, you know, in conversation, like you verbalize things that you hadn't verbalized before and it's like, it, it actually helps you to understand it. It helps yeah. you to understand it it better, right? Yeah, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you, man. Thank you very much for even thinking of me for for this project. It's quite quite an uh, honor. <laughs> well, I wanted to have an objective, uh, like you know, there are certain categories that let's say uh, mentalism points part, but uh, I wanted to have some people like more in the younger category, and uh, you know, you are perfect and also generous enough to uh, accept the invitation because it's not as if. Um, like I had already something filmed and you know where I'm going with this. Like, so, so there's an element of trust that uh, I really appreciate because I'm going to have to package it in a way that's going to represent you well, you know? So uh, yeah, exactly. you'll be seeing some stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, hopefully I'll get your okay and we'll put this all uh, online for other people to uh, discover. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I would love that. It's, yeah, that's why I'm doing this for you to put it online. <laughs> That'd be kind of a dick move, right? If you, you did it all and then you're like... <laughs> 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Let's not upload that. <laughs> no, it's all good. So on this, uh, thank you for everything, Mr. Moritz, and uh, we'll hopefully keep in touch. You're a great gentleman, and thank you so much for your... Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> Until then. <laughs> <laughs>